Welcome to the only Hunter DPS guide you'll ever need, and learn how to parse 99 in Sunken Temple. This detailed guide will be organized in several parts. We will first go over the different specs and runes explaining the strengths and weaknesses of each, then talk about what gear you want to be looking for and what professions you need to level up. Part 3 will be about what consumes you absolutely want to bring to raid and of course the famous world buffs. Part 4 is raid optimization, what class buffs and debuffs you need to perform as good as you possibly can. Part 5 will be about our very complex rotation. And finally, we'll go over every boss in the raid to see what to do. For the runes, it's either melee runes or ranged runes. As a melee, you'll always want melee specialist, dual wield specialization, and flanking strike, and BM. And you will also want the new runes from Phase 3, Raptor Fury, and Cat-like Reflexes. And depending on if you're playing with a pet or not, you'll switch Lone Wolf and Aspect of the Lion. As range, you'll want Expose Weakness, Sniper Training, Chimera Shot, and Trap Launcher. And the new Phase 3 ranged runes, Lock and Load, and Focus Fire. Though, if you're playing without a pet, you would then take TNT and Lone Wolf instead of Aspect of the Lion. For your talents, you have four choices. Melee Beast Mastery, Melee Survival Lone Wolf, Range Marksman, or Melee Marksman. Let's start with Beast Mastery. This spec will be the best in the early weeks of the phase because it doesn't scale as well with gear as the other specs. This will probably, for most people, be the spec you'll want to play for most of the phase. It's strong, reliable, and easy to play. All you need to do is make sure you have either the Wind Serpent for Sunken Temple for the max rank Lighting Breath, or a cat with max rank Bite and Claw. Then we have Survival Lone Wolf, which is, in my opinion, going to be the best spec once we are fully best in slot, simply because as you get more gear, you will scale much better compared to your pet. You will also then have 30% increased damage stacked with your world buffs. Also, this means you can have good AoE damage on trash without need to change spec. Just switch to ranged runes and explo shot. You'll be competing with mage damage. Obviously, this becomes way better if your guild does bigger pulls, especially for speedruns. Then we have ranged marksman. Uh, it's in a much better place than it was last phase. It still doesn't compete with melee BM and survival, but it does bring true shot aura. Uh, which is basically just as important as Wind Fury, at least for Hunters it is. You also want a cat with fast attack speed, so ideally you'll want to get Broken Tooth, which pairs perfectly with the new rune um, Focus Fire. And we have Melee Marksman. That can potentially be better than Ranged Marksman. It would be the same gear and runes than Deep Survival, but it's still to be tested, so don't take my word for this spec. For gear, you'll pretty much want the same for both specs, except for the weapons, of course. Your Priebus consists mainly of Gnomer gear, but if you leveled a fresh tune, farming the Emerald set is great as well. So what you want to farm is the wild offerings for your trinket and ring, your hunter trinket Devil Sore Eye, which is clearly broken as it gives 150 AP, so the same as the warrior's diamond flask. Also don't forget to farm STV Blood Moon event for your bow and crossbow. Now for Bisque gear, the helmet is rank 7 PvP. The neck, weapons, and the three set are from the raid. The cloak and belt are either a Rathi rep or BOE, but you've got several items you can choose from. The other pieces like rings, trinkets, and bow are the same as the pre-biz. Yeah, so they were basically biz. Now, as a hunter, you have four professions you can choose from. Leather, working, enchanting, engineer, and alchemist. For pure DPS, the best combo would be alchemist and enchanting because you would get an extra 95 attack power, 50 from the enchant, and 45 from the flask. But Leatherworking and Engineer is still very good as well, especially if you haven't gotten the Exalted Warsong Bracers. So you'll be able to get the Engineer Bracers that are just as good, and with Leatherworking you can get these insane shoulders. Basically, choose whatever profession you want, just make sure you don't slack and have no profession. Now, Consumables and World Buff. For World Buffs, you will need Dark Moon Fair in either Mulgore or Elwyn Forest, Songflower in Felwood, and fervor of the Temple Explorer, which is the new Sunken Temple World buff that drops in Booty Bay and Yojamba Isle. Now for consumables on WoW Sims, you can very clearly see all the different consumes available and the DPS increase they each yield. First of all, you absolutely don't want to slack on Mongoose, Elixir of Giants, and Mojo of War, as these are the biggest DPS increase you will get out of all consumes. Then in second priority, you will want to buy Scrolls of Agility and Strength 3 for your pet and grilled squid for you. Now in third priority are consumes that will very so slightly increase your DPS, and if you're tight on gold, you'd be better of saving your gold to buy extra mongoose, or engineering consumes that will always be useful, like sappers, dynamites, and dummies. 
Now for raid min maxing, this is by far the most important part for DPS increase. If you don't have every buffs on you and all the armor reduction debuffs on the bosses, you cannot even dream of doing a 99 Parsi. You want to make sure you have Curse of Wreck, Fairy Fire, and Rogue Expose armor. Homunculus and Sunder armor works as well, but aren't as powerful. Now for the buffs, as a melee hunter, you'll absolutely need True Shot Aura for 150 AP, meaning one Marksman Hunter in your group, one Shaman for Wind Fury or Feral with Wild Strikes. Uh, is also a huge DPS increase. And since you're in a melee group, Warrior with um, Improved Battle Shout, which gives an extra 140 AP. Uh, if you have a Feral with Leader of the Pack, that's an extra 3% crit. Let's not forget about Might and Mark of the Wild. Make sure your pet also gets buffed. Now, let's go over your rotation. As you can see, I used Raptor Strike, Flanking Strike, and Wing Clip for 93% of my rotation, the rest being either Bestial Wrath or my aspects. Your your rotation should be to prioritize Raptor Strike, then Flanking Strike, and when you have nothing else, you use Wing Clip to try and get extra Wind Fury procs. And a good habit when you don't know how long a fight will last is to use Bestial Wrath on pull, so you can hopefully use it a second time later in the encounter. And also use your Trinket in Sync with Bestial Wrath, since they are both two-minute cooldowns. Now for Ranged Hunter, it's a bit more complex. You want to pre-place um, traps in situations where you can to get extra lock and load procs. Also, always have your Serpent Sting up for the extra damage on your Chimera Shot. Make sure to prioritize Immolation Trap for the lock and load proc. Double Chimera Shot, multi-shot, then Focus Fire. Rinse and repeat. Good. Now let's go over the bosses. First boss. If you want a chance to get good parse, you'll have to kill him in less than 28 seconds to avoid his knockback. Just use all cooldowns on him at the start and try to get knocked to a pillar close to the boss. And make sure to have your tank do a DBM pull. And don't you ever stop smashing your buttons. Make sure to never stop spamming Raptor Strike and Flanking Strike. Yeah, that boss is great because you get a huge uptime on your Bestial Wrath and Trinket. Next up, Rot Slime. Before this boss, make sure to pre-pot a Nature Potion and keep one extra in your bag just in case. Pretty straightforward as a melee. You just want to keep hitting him and tab occasionally on the items on the side when you come next to them. As you can see, I basically two-shot them, uh, but don't be too afraid of the boss. If he does eat you, it's not a big deal. You don't take that much extra damage, and you can still hit him without having to move. Uh, keep an eye on your health and check if you're getting heals, so it's at your own risk if you want to greed and soak in the poison and die. So get ready to use your Greater Nature Protection Potion. Next up, the trolls. Several things you want to keep an eye on. First troll, you don't even really care about the axes. They don't do much damage. Also remember to be in the back of the mobs as much as possible to avoid parries. If you want to make yourself useful instead of being a selfish DPS, you can also feign death and frost trap to CC or slow the adds when they come back. Loro, you want to look out for his demo shout. It is kickable, but if you know no one will kick it in your guild, just go to the side and go back in. Also, one thing I forgot to mention if you're playing with a pet is to have two macros, one for pet attack and another for pet passive. This will allow to have full control of your pet without needing to mouse click for your pet to attack. Yeah, Solo is quite dangerous. His lighting chain can one-shot, so again, if you see you're being targeted, just feign death. Here I almost die by, by hitting the boss before my tank, so don't do that. For Zulor, just don't stand in his corrupted slam, as it will stun you for two seconds. Oh, and by the way, if you've watched the video till here, might as well subscribe. The main thing you want to look out for is the thorns from Mi Jun. It can be purged or dispelled off him, but don't kill yourself either. Of course, if your guild has a slower kill time, you will have to help to kill adds and use frost traps. You can also wing clip the undead to keep them slowed.
For this boss, you have one job, to not fall in the hole like Guzu did. You can also prepot a nature protection potion for this boss. When the boss runs away to do his delayed wing ability, you can run towards him with Cheetah, but make sure to be as much as possible on the side of him. Also, the damage from his delayed wing won't daze you while in Cheetah. Getting to the boss as fast as possible after each delayed wing is key to getting good parses on this boss. I'd maybe argue that using a Swiftness Potion would actually be a DPS increase. By the way, this is the gear I had when doing this raid. I'm a huge griefer by not having the Devil Sword Trinket. I know, I just forgot about it. I will share a weak aura in the description which will basically tell you what buttons to press. I don't use it, but I should. You first want to start focusing Jamal. Once he dies, you enter phase 2 where you will then focus Ogum. You can also pre-pot a Shadow Protection Potion. All you want to do is dodge the big holy zones on the floor, but if your tank is moving like he should, you won't need to think about it. Just keep an eye on your health to see if it's dropping. Uh, if so, you're probably on an AoE. It's pretty much just Sug Sug. He sometimes does a fear that you can simply outrange. So if you see him cast a fear, just step out and then back in, and you should be good. This Hammers of Jew, you want to have someone kick it otherwise. Well, yeah, everyone gets stunned. Four second stun isn't really great for parsing. Hazus is a cool boss, especially in a parse run because you can cheese the fight. But first, just make sure to be on his side because he tail swipes. You want to kill those elemental fires. If your guild has enough damage, you can all avoid getting the fire debuff, meaning you'll be sent to the Nightmare Realm. Once in Nightmare Realm, you can nuke the boss, where in there he will take 100% extra damage. And that's where you want to use your burst cooldowns. At the time, we didn't think of that trick, so sadly, we didn't do it. Here you'll see some big chunky numbers. Aranicus after the nerf is probably the easiest boss in the raid. Just slap him to death and focus the lumbering dreamwalkers when the boss is immune to damage. Use your burst cooldowns at the start and you might get them back before the boss dies.
Try and switch as fast as you can on the ads to not lose DPS. If your raid has a hard time killing the ads, do make sure to help them. For some extra damage, you can feign death and use explosive trap. But make sure to have your pet in passive a split second before you feign death or you won't get out of combat. Just nuke boss towards the end. For Hakkar, if you get the blood, you're probably not getting good parses here. Pretty simple boss. If you get the blood, simply go out of the raid and 10 yards behind the tank. Wait for Hakkar to drain blood before going back with the melee. We didn't know the strat on this boss and we wiped, so that's why we don't have world buffs for this boss. In the end, don't bother going out, just nuke boss. Well, that's it folks. Uh, I hope this has helped you in better understanding Hunter for this phase. Uh, I'm sure some stuff are going to change in the weeks to come, but uh, until then, yet this should help most of you to perform better in your guilds and climb the DPS meter. I've got plenty of new guides and interesting videos coming up, so don't forget to please remember to subscribe and like the video if you find this helpful. And see you soon, I hope. Farewell and goodbye.